guys, how's it going? So today I wanna to talk to you about how to take care of begonias indoors as a house plant. It's getting colder outside, I'm getting ready to move a bunch of mine in because they can't handle a frost, so I just thought it would be a really good time to talk about it. Now, there are so many different types of begonias out there. So this is kind of a general guide, it's not like really, really specific, but I think it addresses most of the type of begonias that you can most commonly find at your garden centers, and the most common ones that most of us are growing. However, there are a couple types of begonias I'm not including in this guide because they don't winter over very well inside. And those are your wax begonias. They're very common. You see people using them planted in mass in their gardens. They're used as bedding plants and tuberous begonias, which most often have like the huge showy blooms. Those are grown from tubers and they actually go dormant in the winter time. So you can dig up the tubers and store them much like you would store cannas or dahlias and then plant them up the next spring. But if you try to winter them over as a house plant, all the foliage will die back and that's because they're going dormant so they don't make for a very great house plant. These are the types I'm gonna be talking mostly about. And you can find them pretty easily at your garden centers. So we've got a couple of different Rex begonias here. Now these are grown for their beautiful foliage. There's so many different beautiful varieties of these. We've got an Iron Cross and a Jurassic Pink Shades here. And then on this side, I've got one more Rex begonia. I don't know the variety, exact variety of this one, but then we've got this gorgeous Pegasus begonia. So this is more of a cane type begonia. And it, so it grows a little bit bigger. I think like a foot and a half to two feet tall and wide beautiful, huge foliage, and they're very easy to grow outside in the summer and make a great house plant. So like we do for most of our care guides, I've broken this up into 10 different sections. We'll go ahead and put the title of each section as well as the time signature up on the screen um, so that if you wanna skip forward to anything specific and learn about it quickly, you can do that. The first topic is light exposure, and each variety will require something a little bit different, but as a general rule, begonias like bright indirect light. They'll be very happy in a situation like that. In the winter time, you can put them in a little bit more light because the sunshine is less intense, um, but you wanna be mindful as the temperatures warm up or if you're keeping your begonias as house plants for more than just the winter, you wanna move them out of any direct sunshine and put them in that bright and direct light because direct sun can scorch their leaves, especially if it's up next to glass. Um, now, if you have a really low light situation, like a low light bathroom, you wanna pick a variety of Rex begonia because they can handle the lowest light of all the begonias. Number two is temperature, and this one's really easy. They like a temperature between 65 and 75, which is generally where we're setting our thermostats anyway. So basically, if you're comfortable in your home, they will be comfortable in your home. Number three is soil type. I just use a regular potting mix for my begonias and they do really well. I do think it depends a little bit on the climate that you live in. I live in a really dry, high desert climate, so regular potting mix is great for this type of plant. If you live somewhere that it's more moist or humid, you could use regular potting mix and just add in a little bit of perlite to lighten it up a little bit. You just wanna make sure that whatever soil you use is not holding on to too much moisture, like you don't wanna use garden soil really for any house plant because it's too heavy. You also don't wanna use anything that's gonna drain water too fast, like a cactus or succulent mix. And that brings me to number four, which is about how to repot your begonia. And it's really easy. You basically follow the same uh, rules you would follow with any other house plant. You only bump up one pot size from whatever pot your plant is currently in. So I brought an example home here. I just picked up this Pegasus begonia. It's in an eight inch plastic pot. So I chose a 10 inch terracotta pot. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of potting mix at the bottom. And then I'm gonna introduce the root ball of my begonia. And I'll just take a look at the roots too. If they need to be fluffed up a little bit, if it's pot bound, I'll do that. And then I'll just pack more potting mix around the root ball, making sure that there's no air pockets, it's all tucked in really tightly. And I do make sure to leave a pretty decent sized lip so that when I'm watering the plant, no water goes over the edge. I also have some Rex begonias that I grew in a window box over the summer that I dug out. I just was careful when I was digging to make sure to get as much of the root ball as I could. I'm gonna go ahead and plant all three of these begonias in the same container and I'm gonna go about it the same way. I just planted up the Pegasus begonia and they should winter over beautifully. Number five is watering. And this is an area I think we all need to be extra careful with begonias because they can rot really easily from too much water. I tend to like to let the top three quarters of an inch to about an inch of soil dry between waterings. Uh, it keeps the plant really happy. I've seen a lot of begonia care guides tell you to keep the soil lightly damp or evenly moist. And I tend to disagree with that because I think it's easy when we're trying to keep things evenly moist to give a little bit too much water to do that. And begonias don't react to that very well. I also like to let the soil dry out because it eliminates the um, problem of fungus gnats. When you have 
a lot of moisture, that's where fungus gnats thrive and they'll breed in those type of conditions. If you let the soil dry out, it disrupts the life cycle and you won't deal with that problem. Number six is fertilizing and for begonias, less is more. So I like to keep mine on just a monthly fertilizing schedule. This is not a type of plant that I do every week or every two weeks like I do some of my other house plants. I use indoor house plant food mix into my water about once a month and the begonias react really well to that. Number seven is on pruning and deadheading. So it's a really good idea to remove any spent blooms or any dried up leaves because that's what insects and diseases can harbor over in. It's just a good practice to keep your house plants free of that kind of thing. For pruning, it's really easy. Most of the time I don't have like really leggy growth. If you do, you can go in and just pinch off the leaves that are, you know, too long. Or if you've got one that's kind of damaged, um, like I've got one right in here, I can follow that leaf down to the base and then just pop it off with my fingers or a pair of scissors. Number eight is about fungus and insect management. So I did mention before that keeping your plant free of any dead leaves or dead blooms will help decrease the amount of fungus and insects you deal with dramatically. So it's a good idea to keep up on that. Um, typically, I don't deal with a whole lot of diseases like fungal diseases on my begonias because we live in such a dry climate and they tend to not deal with it when they're outside because the airflow is so nice. They're getting breeze and wind and things like that. Um, so it keeps the fungus at bay. But when you bring them inside, all of a sudden they're in still air. Uh, you know, they're not getting the airflow that they once had. So if you start noticing like a white powder form forming like powdery mildew or gray mold, you'll start noticing like lesions in the leaves or on the blooms. You wanna get on top of that. I would recommend using a copper fungicide for indoor plants about every 10 days for two or three applications and that usually controls the problem. And for insects, typically I just use an insecticidal soap and that takes care of most everything that I'm dealing with. The only thing that can be a little bit tricky are mealy bugs. Um, once your plants get those inside, it's kind of hard to get on top of it. I um, tend to like to use an insecticidal soap coupled with hand removing the mealy bugs by dipping a Q-tip in alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and then just hand swiping them off. I also will repot my begonia if it's been in its pot for a while. I'll uh, rinse a lot of that soil off and put brand new fresh soil in and that'll help eliminate part of the life cycle of the mealybugs. Number nine is on humidity and begonias do prefer to have a more humid air around them and you can quickly tell that they're not getting enough by the way their leaves look. So you can see on this leaf right here, it's got browning edges and that's a very good indicator that the plant is not getting enough moisture. And it's a huge problem in my area because like I said before, it's very dry here. Um, so there's a few things you can do to help combat the problem. First thing you could do is put a humidifier next to your plants. Most of us don't want humidifiers placed all around our house just for the well-being of our plants because it's not the best look. Um, you can mist your plants, put some um, water in a spray bottle and go around and mist your plants, but you have to do it quite often in an area like mine. And so I just don't tend to keep up on something like that. So the way that I do it, and I did this down at the garden center when I was taking care of all the house plants, was I'd fill a large tray up with pebbles and then put a little water in, in the tray and then set my plants on top of the pebbles, making sure that the water didn't reach the bottom of the pot because I didn't want the soil sucking up any additional uh, moisture. But it was just enough water in there so that as it evaporated, it would kind of create a little bit more of a humid environment around the plant. And I found that it worked really well. I think that's kind of a debatable thing. Some people have really good luck with it, some people don't. Um, but I do recommend that way. And the last topic, number 10, is on toxicity. So begonias are commonly listed as fine indoor plants, even if you have pets and kids, because even though they do have some toxins in them, they are all located in the underground portions of the plant, so they're um, located in the roots. So even if someone was to get a hold of the roots, which is very unlikely, they would have to eat an enormous amount of them to necessitate any kind of treatment. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope it was really helpful to you. Now, I am not a professional begonia grower by any stretch of the imagination, but I have grown them in my own home and taken care of them down at the garden center for many, many years. And those are just a few of the things that I've learned along the way. So I hope they helped you out. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.